Hi, I'm Polly from the Children's Museum of New Hampshire and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about making some bird feeders that you can use in your backyard. Um, and some of these feeders are good for attracting specific types of birds. So maybe if you want to try to see some special bird visitors in your yard, you can try this out. Um, both of the activities are pretty simple to do with things you might already have at home. Um, but if you don't have these things at home or you're not able to feed birds in your backyard, you can still do some observations. And if you check out our blog posts about backyard birding, you can see a sample of a chart that might work well um, to have kids take a look outside and see what they see happening with the birds in their yard. Um, so the first type of feeder we're going to make today is going to be the kind that we're going to make with a paper towel tube. So for this one you need a paper towel tube, you need some string, you need some bird seed, or you can use things from your pantry that birds like to eat. And there's a link on the blog to some of the things that birds like the most. Um, and then you need something to make it all stick to the tube. I'm going to use some shortening because it's left over from baking at the holidays and I don't believe it will be used before it expires. Um, but you can do this with sun butter or peanut butter too. So this part can get a little bit messy, but this is a really fun project for kids to do and take part in and then they can help hang it up and then they can kind of observe and see if any birds come and eat the food they put out. So this is a fun one. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, I like to have a plate or something to work on because it does get messy. We're going to take our tube and you can use a butter knife for this so it's not sharp. So this is a step that children can do um, with some supervision. And we're just going to take some shortening and just rub it on the tube. We don't need a lot, but we do want enough so that our seeds will stick to the tube. And you may want to leave one part of this that isn't covered so that you can pick it up a little more easily when you're done. Otherwise, it might get all over your hands. Um, and I'm going to leave part that's uncovered anyway because where I'm going to be hanging this is on a fence and the back part of it will be touching the fence and we don't really want that part to have the seeds on it because the birds won't be able to reach it right there anyways. Um, so once you have most of it covered, I did the front, I left some of the back empty because I'm going to put this on a fence outside. Um, then you can take your mixture. I have some sunflower seeds, I have some peanuts and some pumpkin seeds on my plate. I'm just putting it right on top of the other plate and I'm going to roll it so that all of those seeds and the stuff the birds are going to like to eat will get stuck to the outside here. And if you want to kind of try to get it as covered as you can, if some of it doesn't stick from rolling it, you can just stick it in. Um, Kids may have a harder time with doing this without getting it, getting the shortening or peanut butter all over them. <laughs> um, but since I'm a grown up, I'm not having too much trouble poking these in without getting it on me. Um, and then just like if you're making something with glitter or something, you can shake it out a little after and make sure um, nothing's going to fall off when you transport this to wherever you'd like to hang it up. Um, so now I've got mine pretty much covered anything comes off. I'm going to take my string and just thread it through and this is where it can be helpful to have more than one set of hands. So if you have a helper, um, maybe one person can hold on to the tube and another person can hold the string. I'm going to set mine back down on the plate since I just have one set of hands. Um, so we'll take our string and just tie it up. And this is how we're going to hang this up outside. You can use a different type of string if you'd like. I use this one because it's flashy. Um, but you can use string that you use for gardening or twine or something like that. Um, so this is going to be hung out on the fence. And I'm going to take some pictures. And then I'm going to see if I can capture any birds actually coming around. Um, or squirrels probably more likely in my yard. Um, and see if I can capture some pictures to share whether or not any critters come and eat in the feeder. Um, so that's the first type of bird feeder that's pretty easy to put together pretty quick. 
You can do that with pine cones too. We've done that at the museum. Instead of a paper towel tube, we rubbed um, the sticky stuff onto a pine cone and rolled it. Um, the key, I think, is making sure you have a surface you can use that's going to keep from getting too dirty or messy during this. Um, so, and then when you take it outside, if the seeds go on the ground or anything, that's fine. Um, some animals are still going to find them there. Um, so the second type of bird feeder we're going to make is going to be this, the one that is for a special type of bird. Um, this one is going to be specifically to try to get Baltimore Orioles to come to your yard. Um, and their Orioles are a little bit rare. They're a little special because they're only around for certain months of the year. They migrate, so we're only going to be seeing Orioles where in the Northeast um, in the springtime and the summer, early fall, and then they'll leave. Um, so they really like to eat fruit. So something you can put out for them um, are oranges. They like oranges, which is kind of neat because they are orange. Um, so that's a good way for kids to remember which bird is the Oriole. It likes oranges and it's orange. Um, so we're going to try to make a feeder for them as well. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, so we want to cut our orange open. They need it to be cut open to be able to eat it. Um, it's not going to help them too much with the rind completely closing it off. Um, so we're going to cut it in half. And then the easiest way to put this out as a feeder is actually to find a spot in your yard, um, like a tree or something like that, where you can just put it right on a stick. If you have a way to do that, that's probably the easiest way. Um, Orioles are going to want to have a perch to sit on while they eat and then they'll peck into the orange and eat it. So you want to make sure you put it somewhere where there's somewhere they can perch and somewhere they can reach it with their beaks. So something you can talk to kids about with birding is that birds don't have hands like we do. They do everything with their feet, their wings, and their beaks. So different birds have different types of beaks to allow them to eat different foods. Um, so when you're putting food out for them, you kind of want to think about what kind of bird is this and can it get this with its beak? And if it is getting it with its beak, where, how is it going to do that? It might need to hop up onto a fence and cling onto that. It might need to cling onto a tree. Um, so I'm going to try this with just a stick that I brought from outside. We can pretend this is on a tree. Um, and you should be able to actually just poke the orange onto the stick. I'm going to be getting a little bit of orange juice around. And I might be able to put this in the fence too, so then we can see how that works. Um, so I got mine onto the stick. Now, if a bird comes along, an Oriole would be especially exciting. It can perch here on this sturdy part, and then it can poke in and eat right here. So that is the simplest way you can do this. Um, if you can do that, that's probably the best way to do it too, um, because it's there's not a lot of mess, especially if you're doing it outside. So I'm going to put this one aside and show you the other way to do it. So another way to do it, I took a container from yogurts. You can use something else that's roughly this size, whatever works for you, but this is a good way to do some upcycling. And I use the hole punch to punch two holes in the sides. And I'm going to put my orange inside of here and rest it in. And then I'm going to use my other stick to try to create a little bit of a perch. Um, now this part, if you want to make a really sturdy perch, you might want to use some hot glue for this part of the project, which uh, you only want to do with a grown-up. So make sure um, a grown-up is available to help if we're using hot glue. Um, but I'm just going to actually wedge mine in for now, just for the sake of showing you how to do it. Um, so... I wedged my stick in, that's going to be our perch, and then I'm going to take a pipe cleaner and wrap it around through the holes and just kind of use the pipe cleaner to make a handle to hang this up and hang this on the fence as well. Um, so this way the orange is a little bit sheltered. Um, from other animals, although if you have squirrels in your yard, they're probably going to get to whatever you put out. Um, so my advice is to not worry about it too much. If you're using this activity as a way to observe animals in your yard, you can observe squirrels as well as the birds. Um, so now I have this kind of hanging, and I can hang it because I know where I'm going to put it 
on this um, fence. I can hang it with just this. Or you could take an extra length of string and wrap it around and be able to hang it up a little bit higher um, so that the birds have a way to come in and peck and get their oranges. Um, another way to do this, I'm just going to show you quickly in a book. There's a way to make a feeder with an orange as the container. We've done this at the museum before too. Um, so you can use the feeder to actually um, be the bird, or the orange rather, to be the bird feeder. Um, so you, for this one, you actually use a stick to poke right into the oranges and then you fill it with bird seed. Um, for an Oreo, they would like it without the bird seed. They'd be happy with it just as the orange hanging up. Um, this one can be a little tricky to poke the holes in without getting orange juice all over you. Um, but that is a fun one and it's neat because it's biodegradable too. Um, and if you're buying bird seed at the store, something to think about is that um, some of the more inexpensive types of bird seeds will have some seeds that most birds don't really eat in there. So you might be getting more bird seed, but it's not more that they're going to use or eat. Um, so if you make your own stuff at home, it can actually be a little less expensive. Um, or if you're going to buy um, seed from the store, you, you can look and see what kind of birds like it. Make sure you're getting the kind of seeds um, for birds you might see in your yard. Uh, and that way you can also make sure if you're going to get some bird seed, maybe get the one that's a little more expensive that you know they're going to eat the things that are inside it. Um, so this is a great way to start trying to observe some birds in your yard. And like I said on the blog, you can check out the chart that is a sample of what you could do um, to have kids observe. Identifying birds can be really hard, even for people who study them um, or are experts or spend a lot of time bird watching. Um, so something you can do is instead of trying to just identify every bird you see, kids can independently do some observations of birds and write down maybe what the bird was doing. Did you see a bird flying? Did you see a bird hopping? Maybe you saw one eating from the feeder you made. Um, so that's one way to have kids be able to make some observations on their own. And I do recommend either checking out from the library or getting a field guide for birds in your area. And that's a really great way to get started with identifying them when you go out on walks or even in your own backyard. Thank you for checking out our video and we hope to see you soon. Bye.